Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. In this video, pag-uusapan natin kung paano mag-translate ng propositional forms into English statements or vice versa. Without further ado, let's get this lesson started. Previously, na-define na natin ang iba't ibang logical operators at kailangan pa rin natin sila sa lesson na to. Dahil dito sa mga logical operators, meron silang mga common translations na magagamit natin sa pagtra-translate ng propositional forms to English statement. So, let's start by reviewing negation. Ang negation ay tilde at laging isinusulat before the Proposition variable or proposition constant. Dito kasi sa part na to ng ating lesson, dinedefine pa lang natin yung iba't ibang logical operators kaya ang gamit natin ay propositional variable. Pero mamaya, as we go to the examples, since meron na tayong pag-uusapan ng mga particular statements, edi ang given na doon ay propositional constant. Ang common phrases for negation ay not P. Ito yung pinakagamit na gamit, tsaka never P. However, pwede rin natin gamitin ang it is false that P and it is not true that P. Next for conjunction, ito naman yung caret na inilalagay sa pagitan ng dalawang statements na pinagkoconjunct mo. Ang pinakakomon na translation ng conjunction ay end. Pero based on context, minsan ginagamit din ng but, moreover, although, however, furthermore, at while, basta tatandaan lagi yun sa pagitan ng dalawang statements. For this junction naman, ito ay parang letter V na nilalagay din sa pagitan ng dalawang statements. Ang pinaka-common na translation nito ay or, P or Q. Pwede ring P unless Q, o kaya naman either P or Q. Pag neither na yung involved sa statement, dapat pagsasamahin natin yung negation tsaka or. Pag material implication, arrow na nakapoint lagi sa kanan, nakaturo din, ito sa kanan na statement. Lagi siyang nasa pagitan ng P tsaka ng Q, tas laging nakaturo sa Q. Ang pinaka-common na translation nito ay if P then Q. Pwede ring implies o kaya P only if Q. Kung mapapansin nyo, dito sa dulong example or dulong translation, Q if P. Nauna yung Q kay sa P, pero okay lang yun, P pa din yung ating antecedent kasi P yung kasama ng if. Yun yung palatandaan. P yung antecedent, tapos Q yung conclusion. And then for material equivalence, double arrow naman ito. Still sa pagitan pa rin ng dalawang propositions na pinag-uusapan. Ang pinakagamit na gamit na translation nito ay P if and only if Q. Pwede ding P is equivalent to Q. So, let's have the different examples for translation. Ang gagawin natin sa example 1, given tayo ng mga statements na ito, itra-translate natin yung propositional form na given, gagawin natin English statement. So, I eat pancakes in the morning, ito yung una nating statement, at ang kanyang statement constant ay P. Tandaan ha, kasi may pinag-uusapan na tayo na mismong statement, actual statement, kaya constant na yung given. I drink hot coffee, that's C, and I sit beside the window, that's W. At dahil ito ay mga constant, dapat yan ay lahat capital. So first, we have P, and then this is the symbol for conjunction, and then negation, C. Recall natin na itong P ay I eat pancakes in the morning. Tapos, yung C na involved ay itong I drink hot coffee. Pero nakanegate. So dito, kapag nagnenegate tayo or nagnenegation ng isang statement, lalagyan lang natin ng not sa part ng verb. So gagawin natin tong I don't drink hot coffee. Hindi pwede yung gagamit ka ng antonyms. For example, hot ang kabaligtaran ay cold. Hindi pwede na ang not C or negation C ay gagawin mong I drink cold coffee. Mali yun. Hindi yon ang negation ng C. Tandaan nyo lang, hindi tayo gagamit ng antonyms dito. Instead, magdadagdag tayo ng not or don't. To denote that we are negating 
the given statement. Okay? So, ito, itong P na I eat pancakes in the morning, i-co-conjunct daw natin sa not C. Not C, ang ibig sabihin nun ay I don't drink hot coffee. Ang common translation para sa conjunction na to ay end o kaya but, however. So, yun, pagdudugtungin lang natin. I eat pancakes in the morning and I don't drink hot coffee. O kaya para mas tama, yung end pwede nating palitan, gawin nating but. I eat pancakes in the morning but I don't drink hot coffee. Ayusin lang natin to kasi dapat pancakes. So, yan yung ating translation for number one. I eat pancakes in the morning and I don't drink hot coffee. O kaya naman, I eat pancakes in the morning but I don't drink hot coffee. Next, for example two. So, dito ang involved sa atin ay P, C at W, yung tatlo. Kaso wala tayong ina-negate kasi wala namang symbol for negation. So, is isulat lang natin dito. I eat pancakes in the morning. P, ang C ay I drink hot coffee. Tapos, yung W ay sit by the window. Or I sit beside the window. So, dito, kung mapapansin nyo sa given natin, magka-group itong dalawang statement na ito. Tapos, sila ay naka-disjunct. So, ibig sabihin, itong dalawang statement na to ay magka-group. Tapos, silang buo yung nasa kaliwa ng arrow. Di ba ang arrow ay material implication? So, ito, itong nasa left ng pinaka-arrow, silang dalawa, yung ating antecedent. Tapos, itong W, ito yung ating conclusion. Kung baga, ang titingnan natin kasi dito, since magka-group ang P or C, ang main connective natin or ang main logical operator natin ay itong implication. Tapos itong buong to ang antecedent, tapos itong solong to ang conclusion. As for the antecedent, kailangan magkadugtong ito gamit ang isang common translation ng disjunction. So gamitin natin yung or. So ang translation ng given propositional form na ito ay If I eat pancakes in the morning or drink hot coffee, then I sit beside the window. Kung baga itong I eat pancakes in the morning, ito yung P. Tapos yung or, ito yung disjunction. Tapos instead na isulat mo pa yung buong I, drink coffee, pwedeng tanggalin mo na yung I, dugtong mo na lang yung drink hot coffee. Yun na rin naman yung ibig sabihin nun. So yun yung magiging translation ng C. Yang buong yan, I eat pancakes in the morning or drink hot coffee, yan ang dapat sasama sa if. Kasi itong if yung kanilang antecedent. Ito yung magsasabi kung nasan yung antecedent. Then, ito naman yung magsasabi ng conclusion, I sit beside the window, represented by capital W. So, ito yung tamang translation for example number 2. Next, dito naman sa example number 3, given naman yung mga English statement, tapos gagawin natin silang propositional form. Given tayo nito, my phone's battery is at 10%, I charge my phone and my phone shuts down. Ang kanyang mga constant ay B, C, and S respectively. So nga pala, kapag nag-a-assign tayo ng mga proposition constant, dapat hindi na uulit yung letter. Kung nagamit mo na yung B dito, dapat hindi mo na magamit ang B as a propositional constant for a different proposition. Para hindi nakakalito sa pagtra-translate, kasi di ba, kunwari, kung dalawa yung B dyan, mahihirapan tayong i-identify kung ano ba yung nasa example, aling B ba yung tinutukoy, yung una or yung pangalawa. So, dapat isa lang. So, sa example 3, ito yung kanyang proposition. I charge my phone if and only if my phone's battery is at 10%. Ito yung una nating proposition. And this is represented by, I charge my phone. So, letter C. Ito naman yung pangalawa. My phone's battery is at 10%. So, ito naman ay B. Recall na meron tayong connective na if and only if. And this if and only if is the common translation for material equivalence na ang symbol ay ganito. Double arrowhead. So, ayan. Nasulat na natin yung kanyang propositional form. 
That is how we translate English statements to propositional form. Next example. If my phone's battery is not at 10%, then I do not charge my phone. Again, ito yung una nating statement, pero dahil nakakabit siya sa if, we can say that this is the antecedent. Tapos, itong pangalawa, kadugtong siya ng then, ibig sabihin, ito ang conclusion. Yung dalawa kong in-encircle, if then, nagbibigay sa atin ng clue na ang kanyang pinaka-logical connective, yung pinaka-main logical operator nito, ay material implication. Such that ito yung antecedent, dito mo isusulat ang antecedent sa kaliwa, tapos yung conclusion sa kanan. Kaso, itong antecedent natin may not. At kapag may not, alam natin na gagamitan ng negation. My phone's battery is not at 10%. Galing siya sa B, kaso yung B naka-negate. At the same time, meron din tayo dito sa conclusion na do not, may not then. So, ibig sabihin, involved din tayo dito ng negation. Kaso, charge my phone. That is from the second proposition C. That's why ganyan ang itsura ng ating conclusion. So, the correct translation of this statement is not B, tapos yung symbol ng material implication, and then not C. Next, for number five. If my phone's battery is at 10%, then I charge my phone or my phone shuts down. So, again, meron na naman tayong if then. If then. So, we have a clue that our main connective is material implication. Next, my phone's battery is at 10%. Ito lang mag-isa yung nasa antecedent. So, wala rin namang involved na not dyan sa proposition na yan. So, we can just write it as B. Kasi yun yung kanyang propositional constant. However, dito sa ating conclusion, mahaba. Actually, meron pang or na kasama. So, this means na itong ating conclusion ay dalawa sa loob, tapos ang connective sa loob ay or. Or is a form of disjunction. I charge my phone. This is represented by capital letter C. And my phone shuts down, capital letter S. So that is the correct translation for our example number 5. So that's it on how we translate propositional forms. Given man tayo ng English sentence na gagawing propositional form or vice versa, kailangan familiar lang tayo sa iba't ibang logical connectives at kanilang common translations. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.